Hello everyone, my name is Ali and today we'll be talking about a comparison between genetic drift and natural selection. If you enjoyed this video or any of the videos that are present on this channel, feel free to like and subscribe down below. Let's start by saying that uh, we have to know that in nature, traditionally, uh, these forces are going to be acting simultaneously. Like there is going to be interplay between natural selection and genetic drift. But the degree to which the alleles are actually affected is going to be changing depending on the population size. Let's actually start with the comparison between the two. Uh, I know that there are many things that are going to be said repeatedly but explained in different ways in order to clarify the complete picture. First of all, uh, looking at the genetic drift, uh, it is more prevalent in small populations, whereas natural selection it does not really matter, because if it was a small population or a large population, what is going to be affecting the natural population, uh, natural selection rate is actually going to be the conditions and the phenotypic traits of these individuals. Next, it operates at random fashion. Uh, definitely, this we said before that genetic drift actually operates by chance alone, whereas natural selection is definitely not random. And like we mentioned before, it is going to be favoring particular traits. Next, it is non-directional in the sense that it is driven by chance alone. Like we mentioned before, there isn't a particular direction. There isn't a particular thing that this uh, phenomenon is uh, hoping to achieve it is simply random if we for example like we mentioned in a previous lecture if we kill five people out of ten pe uh, five people that already have brown eyes and the other five have green eyes we are this is uh, this genetic drift is going to be leading to a massive change in the allele frequencies however this is there is no direction for it there is no purpose for this Whereas in natural selection, there is a very clear purpose and there, very, there is a very clear direction in the fact that it is going to be favoring those that have favorable traits and these are going to be transmitted and continuing to be present by heredity. Now, it is not, there is no regard to phenotypic traits, whether the eyes are green, brown, yellow, whatever. It does not matter. What is going to matter is the fact that this is only happening by chance regardless of any phenotypic traits be it eye color or whatever muscles what you name it these are not going to matter whereas favorable traits like surviving harsh conditions uh, the ability or the presence for example of a darker pigment on the skin to allow the uh, to allow us to survive in um, uh, in areas where the sun is more prevalent or it affects the uh, people there more these are going to be, uh, this is going to be the idea of natural selection. So favorable traits do matter when we are talking about natural selection, whereas they play no effect when we're talking about genetic drift. Now, advantageous, mutation, uh, advantageous mutations are lost as frequently as neutral or negative um, mutations, which goes back to our point of chance is the one that plays a major role. It does not matter whatever is happening, whatever the phenotypic or even the genotypic um, frequencies of a, particular, uh, of a particular population is, what matters is chance. Uh, as for natural selection, advantageous mutations are positively selected and negative, sele negative mutations are negatively selected. Whereas what we mean here is that people or populations with favorable mutations are going to be surviving and prospering, whereas those with negative uh, mutations are going to be, uh, uh, they're going to be having some detrimental effects to these populations.